Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, what I'm going to be talking about is the Victron Generator Auto Start function. Now, if you don't have a Generator Auto Start, I'd highly recommend get one, make it happen. It's going to make your life a lot easier when living off grid. And this is going to show you all the different things that you can and can't do with it. So um, yeah, let's get stuck in. Now, if you are logged in, so you've got your Victron VRM account and your systems on the internet, there's some really cool things you can do over here. Is you can actually start the generator. Um, so I've got my generator set to auto start here at the moment. So I'm going to turn that off. So when we get into the system, we're going to actually be able to see how to turn it on. So you can actually stop and start your generator. So if you're based here remotely, so I've got that there. You can come down here and do a manual start. So I want to go timed run. I want to run the generator for half an hour or an hour or whatever you want to do. So you can set all that there and get it to start. I'd highly recommend use this feature because it's very easy to turn the journey on forget about it. Well, I, for me, it is <laughs> to get sidetracked. And um, all of a sudden you're like, what's that noise? Five hours later, like, ah, oh, the Jenny's still bloody running. So I'd highly recommend and use this technology. And I'll show you some other reasons of why and how to use the Victron to get all started. But I want to show you some features. So we're going in here and we want to go to the remote console. So if you're actually standing in front of the unit, so you actually might have a color screen like this, or you might have a servo. Now, this is my system. I'm connected to the grid. My system is a bit complicated, so let's forget the grid there. Normally, in an off-grid situation, it would be, uh, it would say generator, uh, or if you might be a hybrid customer, you might have a you know generator and the grid available for two backups. So, but today this is more all about the auto start function and how it can work in an off-grid situation. Now, if I want to show you a couple of features, if you are, you've got the color screen. Just double click on that button there. If you're doing this remotely, so click on that escape button twice and then twice again, and it's going to rotate the screen. Now let's hope it does it and gets to the right screen. When starting your generator off grid, I'd highly recommend always use the Victron color screen and use the controls to always start your generator. I'd highly recommend don't turn the key unless you really have to. Some generators, um, you know, they basically, if you turn the key, you've canceled the auto start function. If you don't press that auto start function button again, your auto start's not going to work. So be aware of that, what sort of system you have. And, you know, I've got really expensive generators with that, really expensive generators that don't have the pressure button auto start. And we've got some really good cheap ones that, you know, have a mix of both. So it's really important that you understand what your generator is. I'd highly recommend a lot of the instructions that come with this stuff. It's not worth it, jump on the manufacturer's website. So go look at what generator you've got, jump on their manufacturer's website, download the brochures from there. They're normally a lot better and have a lot better instructions. So if you want to start your generator, if you're using the screen, you just click that there. You need to hit it twice. I should have actually done that once. So when it starts, I'll cancel it. We'll get rid of that, we'll stop it. You're gonna to want to hit it twice. So I'll actually show you the reason why. It does actually say if you're going to hit this manually. So it comes up with this screen here that needs you to understand that you need to stop this generator manually. Otherwise, it won't stop. So you hit it the second time. And that's why by using the other login and give it a runtime is a lot better than turning on forgetting about it. So, so if you stand in front of the screen, you know, all that happens just on that middle button there. And if you're on the touch screen, you know, if you just slide your fingers across, it'll actually bring this screen up and you're good to go. So we'll get out of that. We'll go back to our main screen that I like looking at. Uh, this is my favorite screen that I like watching uh, my solar system on. So let's jump over here and let's go into the settings. Oh, we'll get out of that there. So when you come in here, it's going to come down to your device list of all the products you got in there. Go to settings. Now, if you're having problems or this is the first time you set this up, what I'd highly recommend is go down to the relay. So most generators, if you're looking at this to understand it before buying a generator, you're going to want a two-wire auto start to use with most off-grid solar systems. Now, in the back of these, it's just got a relay function. On the server, it's in the bottom. You need the little plastic thing to clip up there. This has to be set to generator start stop because that relay can be a few different things. It can trigger an alarm, a tank pump, and so on and so on. So there's a few different things that can be used for. If it's not on generator start stop, you're going to have issues and run into them, the thing won't work. So if you do, if you're in trying to set your generator auto startup and you're having dramas, I'd go down to that relay and make sure that's on. Okay, so come down here. So that manual start function, you can go into that there. And that's where 
the same screen when before is where you can come in here. That's the old way it used to be doing. You want your auto start on. We got that great. It shows how long it run for the day. If you look at that information, we want to go to our settings. Here we go. So conditions. Now, this is where it takes a bit of thought process and everyone's going to be different of what you're willing and what you want to put up with basically with the generator. Some people just never want to run the generator or never want to hear it. So it's just to think about what you want and, you know, you live with this and you live with it yourself. So it's important that you have an understanding of this, of how you want everything to operate and run. So before we get into conditions, I'll explain quiet hours and how they work. So there's quiet hours, which I've got set my place from nine o'clock at night to six in the morning. So ideally in quiet hours, you want to use your batteries more and start the generator less um, because it's quiet time. So total generator runtime, you can reset all that. So let's go up here to conditions, battery state of charge. I really don't recommend using this unless you really understand and are confident that your percentage in your batteries have read, re reads really correctly. Hey, yeah, go ahead with it. Personally, I use battery voltages. I'm not going to use battery voltages in this situation. What I might do is actually flick through all these first before I jump into that. So these are all the different things you can start. So battery current. So if there's a really big load put on, you can actually have it that the generator fires up and all these things have the same setup where it's quiet hours, versus normal hours. Uh, if it's a big AC load, you can have it turn on. So I'll actually duck into this one. So the reason you would use this, so just think about this. I'm going to use a welder as an example because uh, it's a sort of good, heavy, big load. Um, oh, we're in the wrong one. Yeah, so we're using the welder as an example. So if your base load sit around a day like 2,000 watts and you want to do some welding and stuff like that a day, you want to set the, the daytime loads really high. That if you know you're a good sunshine, everything's cranking, that it's not going to start up and fire up. So you don't want your generator coming on in the middle of the day. You can run it from your batteries and do everything good and then your solar PV and things like that. Of a night, maybe. Now, you might be crazy and you might weld it in the middle, in the middle of the night. That's the situation where you go, okay, cool. I want, if my load pops on, it's higher than this of a nighttime. I want the generator to start to help protect my batteries and don't suck all the energy on my batteries to try and run that load. I really want to protect uh, my batteries. And you might say, okay, well, the quiet hours in this here, the, I want that to happen at maybe 10 or 11 o'clock at night because I weld to then. Or you might get up really early in the morning and you might want to use it to do that. So you want to start it up, have the auto start to come on to help protect your batteries so you're not doing those really big, heavy, grunty loads uh, from your batteries, if that makes sense. So, and that's something that everyone's loads going to be different the device that you're using to know you want to protect, everyone's going to let loads be different. It's something that to watch and have a play around with and, um, and yeah, see how you do it. One thing I'd highly recommend is just take some screenshots on your phone of how it was before you start changing settings so you can understand that if you need to go back and go, okay, well, what was it before? You've got those screenshots. Now, I'm going to go to the state of charge. And like I said, I don't really recommend doing this. I prefer to use battery voltages. The reason I'm not going to go into battery voltages video is because everyone has different batteries. You know, you might have one brand of batteries, someone else has a different brand of batteries and your voltage will be different. What I'd recommend is to really understand batteries is go to your battery manufacturer's website and download the most accurate data sheet. You know, when you brought your system, you probably emailed one, you got a copy of the data sheet and things like that. I'd highly recommend go check the new data sheet in the manufacturer's website, compare it to the old one if you've got that or access to that handy. And see what the settings are. And the reason I say go to the new, go to the, the manufacturer's website is because we've actually had manufacturers over the years say, hey, Mike, um, we're happy to increase the battery voltage in our batteries because we, we tested them, we've been running them for a few years, and we're happy to let customers get more access to the battery. So go get the most current up-to-date information. We have had that happen. So you can actually get more and more eddy batteries over the years. Um, we've had customers, well, the manufacturers have changed that. So I'd recommend go to their website. And everyone's batteries are vol voltages are different. And something to think about and understand with battery voltages, I think batteries are just like humans. You know, like for me as an example, if you contact me at three o'clock in the morning, I'm a really early morning person. I'm up, I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm 100 miles an hour and I'm ready to do things. Come after two o'clock in the afternoon, I've had it, I've had enough. I'm worn out. I just want to go to sleep you know, hang out with my kids and I'm just, I'm just worn out. And the kids are always like, dad, dad, dad. I'm like, oh, give me a break. So your batteries are no different. And understanding in your batteries, in your, in your, in the voltage curve, a lot of batteries, as they get fuller, they pretty much just go straight to the top. And there's really not that much usable power in the top. And they've got the duck curve is what they call it. 
And down the bottom, when your batteries are exhausted, so just think about your batteries. When you've gone to sleep, your batteries have been up working all night long to keep everything going, all that power. And as they get lower and lower and lower and towards the bottom of that curve, they do less. Now, if you think about it like this, you, you know, when they're low, they might run your lights, they might run your TV, they might run the fridges and things like that. But when a big heavy motor starts up, so the water pump comes on when you turn the tap on, when uh, you turn the kettle on or the coffee machines, normally what kicks them off in the morning, your batteries have like, they're tired, they've been working all night, they just want to have a break. So it's really good to think about and have a look on the voltages on your batteries, where that voltage, where that curve starts to dip down and where you might want the generator to start in the mornings. Now, we'll explain this quite hours. So of a day, I normally have it a little bit higher. And I think about like this, the way I've sort of worked out my life, and sometimes it's, you can never get it perfect. You, you're doing the best of scenario in this situation. So the way I think about my life is that as the day has gone on, we haven't got our batteries charged from the generator. Um, what it does is the generator is going to fire up. If the batteries are lower than 30% before the daytime hours finish, that generator is going to fire up, charge the batteries up to 60%. So ideally, you know, overnight, my batteries of a day, my, my batteries might have got to 40%, you know, and at 5 36 o'clock, we've cooked food, we've done that, we've used a heap of energy, and it drops down to under that 30%. The generator is going to kick in. It's going to run. It's going to charge everything up to 60%. So that ideally what I'm trying to do there and the way for me is we use about 50% of our battery capacity overnight. So I put 60% in it to make sure that, you know, come nine o'clock when my quiet hours kick in, that I've got enough capacity from nine o'clock to get me through to the sun in the morning so the generator doesn't come on and doesn't interrupt our sleep. Now, your generator might be down the paddock. You don't care. Everyone else's situation is different. Uh, we actually live in town now. For me, it's actually the grid, uh, and we do actually have a generator here as a backup. And um, it's another whole different story of how our generator works here. But this is an off-grid situation, is what I would recommend. Now, if you can see, you go down here with the start value during quiet hours. So during quiet hours, we're going to let the generator, we'll let the batteries do more work down to that ten percent capacity. And this is something I'd really look at that data sheet and have a look where your battery curve is. And see, okay, and a lot of people try and push it to the limits. And, you know, pushing the batteries to the limits is where you're going to have issues at the end of the day where you might put a big load on, it drops quickly below 10%, the load's too big, the generator doesn't start fast enough, and all of a sudden you're in a blackout. So maybe not pushing the batteries to the extreme and figure out and, and have a test on your batteries and see what they like. Some batteries in that voltage curve down the bottom will give you everything to the last moment. Um now, I'll give you an example. If you have Power Plus batteries, it's probably a good example to look at. If you get Australian-made Power Plus batteries, their black batteries will give you more discharge current and higher loads at lower voltages than what the white batteries are. So if you're someone that's got the Power Plus white batteries, they're not going to want to like a very heavy load really early in the morning when those battery volts are under that 50 volts down to the 48, where the black batteries, they will might handle a heavier load a lot better because they're more their premium battery. Um, of how they work. So they'll handle more heavier loads. That's the real difference between the two of them. But if you just run your lights, TVs, and fridges, the Power Plus batteries are great at that first early in the morning. Or if you're someone that wakes up and the sun's up before you have a coffee, awesome. You, you won't really ever notice those issues because the sun's up, the sun's helping everything out, it's bringing the battery voltages up, and you'll never notice that. So it's also unique, all this sort of stuff to everyone's situations. So come down, stop value during quiet hours. Basically, there's a couple of things to think about this here. You really don't want to charge the battery full overnight. You want to put enough charge in there. If the generator does come on in the middle of the night, say, for example, it comes on in the middle of the night at, say, 2, 33 o'clock in the morning, you'll want to make sure it tops up enough that it doesn't start again before the, the sun comes up. You know, what I suppose it, the most annoying thing with that there, if you not haven't got it set properly, is the generator will come on and off all night long. So it stops, it starts. So it's one of those things that ideally maybe you want it on before you go to sleep. So you go to sleep with it on, it just doesn't come back on, it wakes you up later on. So something to think about. So that's some different scenarios of how to use that percentages. And like I said, battery voltage is how I really like to do it. Um, that's, I suppose, when the the best performance I've seen and most accurate data we can get over, over the years is by using the battery voltages. 
And I'd highly recommend have a play around this yourself and learn to fine tune it to get it to the best situation for you. Uh, another thing I'd highly recommend is a periodic run. Now, I'd highly recommend a periodic run is because the problem we've had over the years is there was a big drought for a long time and we were very blessed and everyone's solar cranked and no one ran their generators. The problem was when we went through floods and all that sort of issues that we had, lots of rain, no one's generators worked because they've been sitting around. Remember, these are a mechanical device. They're just like a car. If they're not used, you know, they rot, things get gunky, things don't start, things don't want to run. You will, your generator is going to last a lot longer and you'll have a lot less cost over the time by actually running the generator on a weekly basis. And what you would want to do, you don't want your generator not to fire up and start and it's always, you know, you've never used it or you haven't used it in a long time. It's pouring down rain, your batteries are flat and your generator doesn't start and you've got to get out in the rain and it's just emotional for everyone involved. So I'd highly recommend make sure that set it on a periodic run. Like what I normally ask customers when I'm doing this and helping them out, I'll say, are you normally home, say, Saturday mornings? If you're working, great, you are most Saturday mornings. What time do you normally leave the house? Great. How about 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning? We'll run the generator so you can hear it. It's going. You know it's working, and you're going to see that data. And if your system's not on the internet, you really want to make sure you're hearing it. If it's on the internet, you're going to be able to see how often it's run. So I'd recommend start it once a week, run it for an hour. And one of the other settings in here, which is really good to sort of think about, um, it's back out here. Is the minimum runtime? So this is really good. That literally overnight, save it coming on and off. You have it maybe run for an hour um, to basically make sure that the generator puts enough batteries, enough charge in the batteries to get it working for the next morning. And that's something as well. It's going to be very different and very unique to everyone's own situation. So think about it like this: If you've got a five kVA generator, a five kVA Victron inverter. You're only really going to get about two and a half kilowatts charge into your batteries after an hour because if you get a 5 kVA Victron, it's only going to charge about 3,000 watts. When you take all the losses into consideration, you've got about two and a half kilowatt hours into your batteries after an hour. So you want to make sure that you're putting enough in your batteries that minimum runtime of the size you're generating, the size of your inverter. The bigger the inverter you've got, the faster it's going to charge, and also the bigger a generator you've got, the faster it's going to charge. So it's going to be unique to everyone else's situation. So it's another feature I'd highly recommend. Make sure you're using that minimum runtime and to work out that when it does run, it puts enough in there that if it's the middle of the night, it turns on for that minimum amount of time that it doesn't fire up again and you're not having it come on and off all night. So um, cool. Guys, any questions or comments, yeah, put down in, in below. And I really hope this has been helpful. I highly recommend just have a play with your settings. Remember, take some screenshots on your phone to what they were before previously. If you do make changes, maybe take the screenshots on your phone so you know when you go back to what it was, you can go back and change it and just fine tune it. You know, everyone's energy is completely different. There's not a really one size fits all. You know, if, if I would to set it for something for a customer, I'm going to set it that the generator works more often than not. Uh, I do try and push it to the limits. I am sort of a limit breaker uh, and sometimes that doesn't work for me or the customer. Um I will try to push it to the maximum. And sometimes you just do get that point where the generator doesn't start. You know, think about how many times in an older car. You just remember a lot of generators are old technology. They're just like the old cars where they might wind and wind and wind for their start. And some days they don't start because of weather and conditions like that. It's not always going to be perfect 100%. Um, so sometimes rather than try and push it to the limits, give yourself a bit of a buffer zone if you really want power. Make sure that the generator comes on a bit sooner than later because if it doesn't and you're in the middle of doing something, you can walk down there, flick the key and get it all sorted before you get a blackout. So you want to keep a little bit of reserve in your batteries if that's something that's really important to you. So cool. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, I'll see you then. Have a great day.